I've been saying for quite a while now that I may, heavy emphasis on may, may consider using KD Plasma when 6.0 drops. And it looks like at this stage, that's probably going to happen in February of 2024, with beta releases hopefully sometime towards the end of this year. Now, unlike prior releases, like say, 4.0, it's not going to be a major overhaul of the entire system. Instead, it's sort of a gradual step up, building upon the systems that have already been established. And one big thing that is being worked on is better Wayland support and stability. And with that may come a whole new way to make use of Wayland. So David Edmondson, a KD developer, has been working on a system since 2021 called Compositor Handoffs. He talked about this back at XDC 2021, addressing Wayland robustness. I believe I did a video on this, but I can't find the video. So, I don't know where it is, maybe it was over on the podcast, but recently he made a more up-to-date demo showing the system in its current state. In this case, he's got four windows open. He's got a code editor, a video player, Tetris, and also a terminal. Now, what he's going to do is basically simulate a crash of KWIN. Now, normally what you'd expect is when it crashes and you reopen it, all of your windows are gone. But in this case, that's not what happens. Instead everything comes back. Now the windows aren't in the exact same location, but all of them remained open in the exact same state. This is something that simply wasn't possible on Wayland before. Now there are some applications out there which attempt to do this internally, say a web browser where if it crashes, it will let you reopen the previous session you had open, or say a text editor where it will try to recover the last document you had open. Those are things that those applications are choosing to implement. This is something that just applies at the toolkit level. This is something that just works with pretty much no intervention from the application developers. Since Plasma 5.21, between crashes, the Wayland socket has been kept open, but because there's been no way to reconnect the applications, all of the applications would also be shut down when the crash happened. So all you need to do is don't do that and find a way to reconnect those applications to a newly spawned compositor. Along with this video, David also made an accompanying blog post. QT Wayland 6.6 brings robustness through compositor handoffs. Every release has a killer feature. QT 6.6 features the opposite, staying alive. Ha ha, get it? It's a joke because the windows don't get killed between restarts. Right now, if you restart Pulse Audio or Pipewire, your sound might cut out. Restart Network Manager and you lose your Wi-Fi. Restart an X11 Window Manager and your decorations disappear. But within a second, it's all back to normal, exactly where you left off with everything recovering fine. I wouldn't say recovering fine for all of these. Take for example Pulse Audio. If you restart Pulse Audio or Pipewire while OBS is open, it really doesn't like that and is going to completely forget about all of your sound devices. But yes, for most things, what he's saying is you restart the thing that controls it and everything just reconnects like it should. But that's not the case when it comes to your graphics. This isn't true for display servers. If X11 restarts, you're back at the login prompt. All drafts lost, games unsaved, work wasted. For X11, this was unfixable. Clients relied on memory stored by the X server. They made synchronous calls that were expected to return values, and multiple clients talked to multiple clients. This part isn't entirely true. That's more of a problem with Xlib, not the X11 protocol itself. With XCB, that is asynchronous. This was a real problem in my early days of Linux. X11 would lock up frequently enough that most distributions had a shortcut key to restart the server and send you back to the login prompt. In the very early days of X11, we didn't have our X server and the X clients on the same computing device. We would have an X terminal running the X server and then the clients would be on some other mainframe system. When that was the case, reconnecting the clients was perfectly fine. Nowadays though, we do everything on the same device. And when you do that, developers can take a lot of shortcuts that end up breaking some of the things that have been in X11 for a very long time. Now, to be fair, it's not like Wayland's been any 
better in this regard. Plus, it has its own whole set of issues. Compositors and display servers are now the same process, doubling the space for errors. Compositors are typically extensible with third-party plugins and scripts, and user scripts tend to be buggy. The Wayland security model means the compositor absorbs even more functions from global shortcuts to screencasting and input method handling. The Wayland ecosystem is not in a period of feature freeze, with Wayland protocols constantly evolving to cover missing features and ideas. Even if the compositor was perfect, 40% of Kwin's crash bug reports are either upstream or downstream causes, and the current compositor developer experience is limited with developers having to re-log in and restart their apps and development setup just to test their latest changes. Now obviously being a KDE developer, the main focus at least initially was getting this working with QT applications, and it turns out, <laughs> turns out doing that's actually not that crazy. QT already has to handle screens and input devices being removed, clipboards being revoked, and drag and drops being cancelled. Supporting a whole reset isn't introducing any new work. We just have to trigger all of these actions at once, then reconnect to the newly restored compositor and restore our contents. Applications already have to support all of these events too, as well as handle callbacks to read your buffers. There's no changes needed at an application code level. It's all done as transparently as possible. Handling OpenGL is a challenge. Right now, we don't have a way to keep that alive. Fortunately, we put in lots of effort previously in supporting GPU resets throughout the Qt stack. The Qt Wayland backend fakes the applications the GPU reset has occurred through Qt abstractions, basically being like, yo, GPU reset, ignore the compositor crashing thing, that didn't happen. It's a GPU reset, so just do the GPU reset thing. What's even crazier to me is almost no work needs to be done on the compositor side. For a compositor, there's no difference between a new client and a client that was running previously reconnecting. The only big change we made within Kwin is having a helper process so the whole process can be seamless and race free. Basically, you could do it without this helper tool, it just might be a little bit messy to make sure everything's working like it should be. This blog post is written in the context of Qt6, which is great for your native KDE applications, but you're not going to just have Qt6 applications running on your system. There's going to be a couple of GTK things, there's going to be some Qt5 things, there may be some like SDL games, so you need it to basically be supported on everything. And luckily, that is being worked on as well. There is a development branch along with mergers for Qt5, for SDL, GTK4, Mesa, and also X Wayland. Each of these with minor caveats and things that are currently not working, but it's working enough to demonstrate how the system actually functions. And as one might expect, the GTK discussion went about as well as every normal GNOME Toolkit discussion tends to go. As in, someone suggests something that is really cool, it doesn't come from a GTK developer, someone shows up and starts insulting the developer, and then nothing ends up happening for about a year. Yeah. <laughs> it is still a work in progress, so it may still end up happening. But for now, besides some development, nothing major is really being done. There is a separate issue about this. Rework GNOME Shell architecture would allow restarting under Wayland without crashing, such taking down the spawn apps with it. But the last discussion was about five months ago. Now, you may personally not care about crashes because who cares if your system crashes, or maybe your system just never crashes. But there is more to this as well. So, potential perks. We can support multi-head running different compositors per group of outputs and move seamlessly between them, as in running multiple instances of KDE or GNOME or mix and matching compositors, whatever you want to use, and then moving windows between those different compositors. That's not possible without a system like this. Most people probably don't have a use case for that, but I'm sure there's going to be some sort of weird corporate use case where that makes a lot of sense. But something else that might make more sense is it's feasible to switch between compositors at runtime. That probably doesn't make that much sense, but I'll show you the demo. So in this case, we have this selector here to switch between Plasma, Western, Sway, Hyperland, and Gnome. In this case, we're currently on Plasma, and swapping over to Western 
all of the applications remain open. If we swap over again, that should be back to Plasma. All of the applications stay open. It's going to take a second for Plasma to like restart up properly. Everything just recovers. And that can be done with other desktops as well. This time going over to GNOME using like a modified version of GNOME. Then I believe at some point it goes over to Hyperland. Yep. And then at Sway. And you can just swap around as you want to. And all of your applications stay open. But maybe that isn't enough for you. Maybe what you want to be able to do is checkpoint restore in user space, being able to suspend your application to disk, and then pick up where you left off like nothing happened. So in this demo, he's got color paint open, it's got like a bird in it, it's got a Wayland logo, and what he's going to do is take the memory that is in use, this 44.4 megabytes of memory, and save it all to disk. In just a moment, that's no longer going to be in the system monitor. Right there. So the application is no longer in RAM. And then in just a moment, he's going to run a command and the application will come back in the exact state it was in before. This is just being done with a single application, but that's not a technical limitation. That's just for the sake of the demo. With sufficient tooling to make it all convenient to do, you could theoretically suspend your entire graphical session to disk, reload your entire system, and restore it to the exact state it was in before. And theoretically, thanks to the other things, move all of your applications over to another compositor after a restart. Like, this is a wild feature. It is a while away from this being like a standard on the Linux desktop, but I am so happy this is being worked on, and I cannot wait. I really hope that GNOME doesn't delay this until the end of time, because this is such a massive usability improvement. But for now, it is a super cool feature, and I wish David the best of luck, and hopefully it comes along well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think this is a good idea? Is it something you would actually use? Or do you think it's just a giant waste of time and applications just shouldn't crash? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon subscribe to the Periphery linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And imagine if KDE had the support of GNOME.